Uh, well, it's wonderful to be back with you all this morning and to share with you the development. Uh, as Ray said, we transition from an idea into real packages. And to that end, we've identified six packages. Uh, and we have put them in an order that we think needs to happen um, as the work gets moved forward. So uh, I'll go into more detail, but the first one is really that envelope. When you think about the outside of the building, everything outside, so windows, stone, uh, flashings, those joints that are between the walls and the roofs, the roofs themselves. Um, and then the second package is all things organ. We need to get the envelope tight so water doesn't come through, and then we can focus on the organ itself. So all things organ are phase two, or package two. Concurrent with that, and you'll see in the schedule, uh, rehabilitation that needs to be done in the sanctuary while the organ is out. We need to make dust uh, before we bring the organ back. Uh, the fourth package really speaks to hospitality and welcome and fellowship. It's a new uh, infill that makes the building completely accessible. Uh, second floor, basement, first floor, Lloyd Hall versus the parish house. Uh, it really sort of mediates between there. And then those sort of creature comforts, the bathrooms, uh, that you all told us were so essential. Uh, and so uh, it's a very modest, and I want to emphasize modest building that uh, really is jam-packed with lots of, of uh, improvements. And then we'll focus on the parish house in Lloyd uh, trying to do the minimum necessary to improve life safety, uh, mechanical systems, and to make the building function well for the parish as a whole moving forward. And then finally, uh, the sixth package really gets to uh, the Litchgate uh, Garden. And let me see if I can, I forgot to start the video. So, uh, I will say that all of this will be up on your um, website probably later in the week. Uh, we're going to go through it fairly quickly this morning, but you'll have the opportunity to review it and study it and uh, give your feedback. As Ray said, it's this is really your plan. Um, we just sort of listened and gathered all of your different ideas and tried to put them together in a logical, a logical way. So we are in um, the phase right now that is design, um, which is this gray bar here. By uh, hopefully this fall, you will start to see scaffolding going up around the building. Uh, and uh, the envelope repairs will take place. Then um, by, uh, by the end of the year, beginning of January, the organ will be removed. Uh, Foley Baker has been working, uh, and they've been down here a number of times, uh, looking at the organ. The organ will be removed so that it can be restored. While the organ is out, that's when we're going to make dust. So that'll be 18. It'll be a busy year, lots of activity. Um, and then after that is completed, we'll be working on the infill and possibly concurrent uh, with the infill and new entrance, if we can afford it, um, would be the additional renovations in the parish house. Now, we may do those in a series of things so that you can occupy the building. So we may take an individual area and work on it and move on to the next area and the next area. So that may take a longer period of time and that may definitely be fun uh, dependent with the Litchgate sort of being an out year uh, project. So the envelope repairs. Um, I had the opportunity to get on the lift with Steve, uh, hence when I was down here in February and oh my gosh, what I saw. Um, it's a... Uh, you, you have real issues. Uh, and we had noticed it on the inside, um, but there are holes, there's flashing missing, there's slates missing, uh, there are joints um, that are open, these masonry joints, and we'll see a couple in a minute. Uh, we've got cracks, you know, the joints are empty, which means water can get into the building. And that's what we were starting to see on the inside, both in the plaster failing, and then also in the staining. Uh, in the sanctuary. And so Steve uh, developed this series of drawings which uh, are a little bit misleading and I apologize the scale makes this very difficult to see. 
But everything that's sort of in the lighter rows is actually the critical. Those are the worst conditions. And not surprisingly, they're up high on the building, which also makes them a little more challenging to repair because we need lifts and scaffolding and other ways to get up there. Um, the tower is definitely in, in need of a lot of repair. We have a combination of sort of granite and uh, limestone. The limestone joints are, are open as well. So that's really the work that uh, will be happening this year. The other thing we noticed is that um, a lot of your downspouts have pinholes in them. And so when you get a lot of rain and the rain sits in the downspouts, it leaks back through to the masonry and is saturating the inside as well. So we really can't do a lot of the interior repairs until we get the water to stop flowing through your building. Uh, the second package is, as I say, all things Oregon. And so um, that includes increasing the size of uh, the Oregon Chamber. So you've seen these photos before. You, you know the condition. We are seeing a lot of water coming into the Oregon area. Um, and we know that the temperature gets high up there. And so uh, we need to uh, add some way of mechanical ventilation to keep the temperature in the Oregon area and the pipe areas uh, cooler than it is currently. Right now, you have a very small area uh, towards the parish house that's your great chamber. Uh, you have a larger area over the Selden Chapel. What we're going to do is increase the size of the great chamber, spread the pipes out a little bit, give them some breathing room, um, and move the lower room over. And so this, when, when we make these modifications to open up this it's really good the organ will be gone because we it's very tight who's been in the organ chamber it's really tight in there slide in like this so we're going to uh, remove everything we're going to make a lot of dust create these new openings um, and be able to bring the organ back and have it ready uh, the um, we'll also be addressing some uh, ventilation uh, we we have to be very careful in the design of the mechanical system for these areas because we don't want to um, change the temperature. We don't want a lot of air movement in there. We just want to be able to exhaust the hot air that naturally uh, goes up. So um, a couple of other things. While the organ is out, we'll work on the sanctuary, as I say. There are about five areas in the sanctuary that we want to focus on. Um, certainly uh, addressing things like life safety. There is a door that uh, some refer to as the double door uh, <laughs> that sort of goes to the stair. At the moment, it actually swings into uh, the aisle. It really needs to swing in the direction of the stair so that in an emergency, everybody can exit safely, and that's, that's this door here. Uh, we are not planning to change the lay layout of the pews. Uh, we had looked at a lot of different configurations, uh, but in the end, we're not going to do that. Uh, the other thing we did uh, last winter uh, is we did some cleaning tests. I don't know if you all remember in the Selden Chapel, we set up some scaffolding. We tested four different products, um, and we used what is called a poultice. And what happens with the poultice is you put on this liquid, uh, and it's wet, and then as it dries, it sucks the dirt and dust out of the stone, and then you peel it off. Um, I think in the years past, uh, someone had used a poultice in the tower, near the tower area, and uh, that is a very traditional poultice with uh, technology and, and innovation. We're using a latex poultice, but it's the same idea, and it, I think uh, we were really pleased with the product. We tested four different products, and we were really pleased with the outcome of this product. And it didn't generate a lot of dust. I mean, that was the other really positive area. So if we need to do this over a series of, of months or years, um, we would be able to do it. We also need the building to be dry before we apply the poultice. And so uh, certain areas of the building, after we get the envelope tight, may take up to two years to dry out. They're really saturated walls. And so that means that we may not be able to do um, some of the cleaning during the renovations, but it could be done over time. And they would be modest interventions. Uh, 
uh, into the space. So that was a, a really great outcome, and thank you for indulging us and letting us test. Uh, hopefully it was uh, useful for you all to see how nice and clean we can get the stone. And we always have this debate, is how clean is clean? Um, because clean is a relative term. Uh, and uh, I think this is a good balance. Um, compared to where we were, this is, a, this is a relatively clean, but it doesn't look brand new. We don't want this to look like it's a brand new building. Uh, other areas, so we talked about the double door. We also looked at reconfiguring the accessible ramp at one point, but I think in the end we're going to leave it alone, just make it not a drum anymore as the children <laughs> run up and down. Uh, we need to address uh, some of the kneelers. One of the things you all told me loud and clear last spring is the kneelers need improvement. Um, we're going to look at how to maybe make some adjustments at the stairs coming up uh, to the choir area, give a little more room at the top of the stairs so that right now if you come up the stairs it's really short uh, landing at the top so maybe give it a little more breathing room. Um, we're also uh, going to make the, um, a, a real ladder to the swell chamber. I don't know if anybody has ever been up there. It's a scary undertaking. Um, and so uh, in the interest of the investment you're making in the organ, we really need to make access to that area improve so that we can uh, maintain it long term. Uh, so that's, and this is just a, a little bit, it's a very subtle change, uh, but, but see how tight that gets. If you're here and you want to go to the pulpit or to the left turn, it's a really tight little narrow landing. And so we want to make it a little bit uh, deeper just to make sure that everybody can get, uh, get through safely. So not a lot of changes in terms of the pew configuration. We do need to work on the pews themselves. Some of them have been damaged over the years. We also uh, need to improve some of the floors. Lighting is something we've heard loud and clear. It's very dark on those stairs. It's very dark when the choir is trying to read the music. Uh, so we want to improve the lighting in these areas. And then uh, also some lighting on the rare dust. You have an amazingly beautiful rare dust. And at the moment, it's very hard to see it and see all the detail. And so we want to use a little bit of illumination and highlight the glory of that space. Uh, really to make it uh, part of your celebration. And then uh, the, the pulpit in the Selden Chapel is also a little on the dark side. I think we just have to read from there. It's a little difficult. Uh, so lighting is also an important enhancement uh, that we'll be making in these areas. But it's a relatively modest scheme. Uh, you can see uh, a couple of positions, one on the roof beam, and then uh, one higher in, in the um, trusses to just provide a more general illumination and to highlight these areas. So not a huge lighting project. Um, the other big thing that we've heard is the mechanical systems in the church uh, have some challenges. Uh, and so what we're looking at doing is moving you all to a geothermal system. Now, geothermal takes advantage of the heating and cooling in the earth uh, to be able to model, moderate, moderate the temperature in the spaces. It is a very efficient system. It also, um, because you're really using the earth to do your heating and cooling, it's a great investment in the future. Um, because of the uh, energy savings you will have long term. And so it's a very good, from the sort of sustainability perspective, it's one of the most sustainable systems we can put into your, uh, uh, your church. And we're going to build all the wells initially, and then as we renovate the areas, we'll bring those wells online. Uh, and so we won't be putting in all of the equipment at once, all the wells will go in at once, and it will make a mess. Uh, we're going to be drilling 29 to 36 inch holes all over the area <laughs> at Boston and Stockley and then down Stockley a little bit um, in order to get the systems in. But we think it's the right time to get them in all at once, make the mess, and then we can move, uh, move that forward and bring the systems online. Uh, the other thing that we heard from you all, package four, is really that infill and hopefully new entrance. 
uh, making it a hospitable uh, welcome space. So where we left it last time, we had a much larger entrance. And what we heard from you all is, we just need a little Mary Kay, and a little landing, and a ramp. And so we tried to listen and scale everything down. Um, and so that's what we're proposing, is a, a new drop-off over top of the uh, well field, and then uh, some stairs up, an accessible ramp up, uh, stairs from the Bosman uh, street side over here, and a very small uh, entrance, really a vestibule, uh, which I realized yesterday would be on access with that wonderful window in the um, Flower Guild room now, that stained glass window that you all salvaged from St. Luke's Church. So as you come through the door, it's not in this yet, but that, that's exactly where you'll be coming in on access. And then from here, it'll be at the level of the parish house, which fortunately is taller than the new flood level that the city just established. Um, and then we'll have an elevator, some restrooms, a uh, new fire control uh, room to add for our fire suppression. Uh, we're going to take all the restrooms that are currently men's and women's on this level, turn them into women's, and then add some new men's restrooms behind. So we'll increase your fixture count significantly um, and, and create this new ramp coming up. So very modest. Uh, modest entrance uh, that hopefully will make everybody feel welcome and invited into. This also becomes your secure entrance during the week. Right now you have a very porous structure, lots of doors that come in and out. And sometimes it's hard for people to find the front entrance because they come from Bossman or Stockley and they come to this door, but they can't get in. And so what we're looking at doing is creating a single point of entry, somewhere that parents know to drop the children off and pick the children up. Uh, somewhere that everybody who comes to visit during the week will come, it'll be accessible, everybody can come in and, and, and navigate through. But, you know, don't want to let the video go too far ahead of me. The one point I made to emphasize while it's up there is the elevator is absolutely critical for the reorganization of the whole building uh, because we're no longer going to be able to use the basement and lower level. And that's the way in which we use the whole building efficiently. So this is the idea of the, um, the, the drop-off. These would be uh, precast pavers. Underneath there is the stormwater retention system to help draw the water away from the building. Um, and so here is the, the new stairs and the ramp that are coming up. Um, we have been looking at the guild house for some ideas on detailing, and so the transom that we showed there, and this is the window that is actually the stained glass window. Um, if anybody knows who that is in the image, I'd love to know. My projection is St. Luke, but I could be wrong. And then the, the elevator is here, and then it opens to the back side. On the second floor of this infill, you would have a few additional restrooms to support the activities on the second floor. The elevator will come up and we'll use one of the existing windows as the connection from the infill to uh, back to the parish house uh, with a little bit of uh, maybe wind coffee bar. We'll move up here. Uh, with some water fountains and bottle fill stations uh, because this is where the choir is moving. So we think that's going to make a huge difference. Um, speaking of, of additional renovations in the parish house, we heard from you all that uh, bringing the children from the second floor down to the first floor, get them closer to the families and the church was also important. And so um, when we left the master plan, we had planned to put the, the nursery here and the parlor here. Well, in the intervening time, your nursery is growing exponentially which is wonderful and speaks to the future of the church. Um, but in trying to sort of right size and provide flexibility, we're now proposing that Father Grant's going to move out of his office and move upstairs, and that will become the parlor. We're actually looking at um, all of the mantles that were salvaged from the guild house and seeing if there's a way to introduce one of those, not as a working fireplace, um, but to enhance the ambiance. The children would move to Father Wynn's office. We would add a, a children's restroom and a, a public 
restroom back. No one is going to have a, an assigned space that they use for one hour a week. Really, in this space, we need everything to work for everybody and have a lot of flexibility for, for changing things out. Along with all of the minor renovations we're talking about, we're talking about adding, uh, bringing the mechanical system online, changing out the mechanical systems, also adding fire suppression and a new lighting uh, to some of these areas to make them work better overall. Uh, in this space, we're talking about subdividing, putting in a movable partition um, that would allow you some flexibility here. So you might be able to have two uh, concurrent meetings or use this for the children um, on Sundays. You know, different age groups could be on different sides of the partition. Uh, but we think this will give you lots of flexibility and, and more potential meeting spaces. Uh, we are looking at a, a partition that will pop up in a minute. Um, that's pretty transparent. It'll fold back against the wall so that you'll have this space as this, as this space long term uh, overall, but it, it'll give you some flexibility as you move, uh, move forward. On the second floor, uh, we're, take, we're, we're going to move the choir out of the basement um, and uh, put them in a, a new space that's essentially about the size of the children's chapel now. Um, move the parish offices upstairs to have a, a, an additional meeting room with maybe a little bit of storage for vesting for the choir um, and uh, a work room uh, for different uh, committees to come in and, and work on uh, activities, layout, and the like. Uh, so this is just a, a view of, of coming down the corridor into the um, new choir room. We're talking about uh, exposing the original trusses of the space again to get that volume uh, back. This is the connection from the parish house into the, uh, where the elevator and the restrooms will be. Uh, but really trying to take advantage of, of the wonderful space that you have and uh, give it a new use. So the choir, this would be choir primarily, but you could also set up a meeting in there, a small lecture. Uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility um, to be able to house a number of different kinds of events in that space. And then the parish staff is immediately adjacent. The Lynchgate Garden is that project that's sort of out there. Uh, it is 
intended to enhance accessibility from the Alney Street side. Right now, if, you're, if you have limited mobility, you come into the church and up the ramp to get to the parish house. It means somebody's got to open the door during the week. Uh, you need to allow access. So what we're proposing is a new accessible ramp uh, on the outside that brings everybody to the parish house level. Um, you have filled your columbarium and you're getting ready to add another section now. Or maybe not filled is the right word. You have sold out your columbarium. <laughs> And so you're getting ready to add another section. But we understand that there is a love of, of Christ in St. Luke's, and so people, more people are, are actually looking to be remembered here. So we're looking at using that wall uh, for the accessible ramp as a, another potential location for, uh, for columbarium. And so uh, we also, as part of this, want to deal with the water that collects out there and improve drainage. And so underneath this ramp, we will also be putting in, um, under the ramp, we will also be putting in uh, retainage. So, or we have jump presentations. Uh, that was uh, part of the video, Mary Kay, where you were talking about it being an iterative process. Oh, thank you, Mary. And you were showing kind of how you went through different phases in that iterative process to come up with, uh, in that particular phase, the uh, lynch gate uh, motif. Got it. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, it, it was exactly right. Design is iterative. We don't have it all solved yet. Uh, we put out ideas. So you all tell us what's right, what's wrong, what we need to change, what we need to tweak. And so, um, that is what we are in this phase right now. Um, we are concluding uh, something called schematic design, moving into a, a work called design development. That's where we'll also be looking at a lot of finishes um, as we uh, select you know, what, what walls, what floors, what bathrooms. And so uh, that is where we are. Um, it's a lot to absorb. I apologize, we try to get this uh, through quickly and still have time for questions um, and that's I think where we are. Thank you so much for coming out this morning, for your time, for your attention, for your interest uh, and thank you for your support. Uh, really this project is able to move forward because you all have agreed that this is the priority for the parish and we're able to, to move this forward.